Uh, hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Reds Take. So let's get started. Um, for this show, it's going to be more about predictions today, and specifically college football, um, since I don't really have much to talk about for today. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I went over my top 10 games for week one um, last week. I forgot what day, but last week at some point. So um, I'm going to do weeks two or three, at least for today, and go over the top 10 games for each of those weeks. So let's get started. So you got Ohio State versus Oregon. Um, so obviously this is an important game for multiple reasons. Um, I feel like the loser of this game will not make the playoffs. So it's important to see who wins. But um, you're going to have, I mean, Ohio State, they have the um, better coach, in my opinion. They have the better, they have the, um, the experienced quarterback and the good athletes. Um, so it's going to make things tough for Oregon. But the one thing is, is that um, these teams traveling west, um, don't do as well as as usual. So that's the one thing Oregon can kind of cling on to. So if Oregon, so the new Oregon quarterback could just like not make mistakes and just kind of game manage, if you will, then Oregon could be in it. Um, and then potentially to get the upset since they're at home, but we'll see. Um, it's, it should be a good game either way. And then two, Texas versus LSU rematch last year. So um, I feel like this one will not be as high scoring per se as last year's was. I mean, like I said, I just feel like LSU's offense is not going to be as good as last year's. Um, with the, them losing Joe Burrow, them losing um, Jefferson with the other wide receiver, them losing um, their offense coordinator um, to the NFL. I just feel like they're not going to be as good as offense. Now, Texas, um, this is their year to hopefully get an upset, a big um, time upset here, because if they can get this win, then finally fans can hop back on the Texas bandwagon and the Tom Herman bandwagon specifically to say they lose this game. It's just going to be another all oh, disappointing year for Texas, it looks like. And Texas has a senior quarterback and a bunch of um, experienced players. Since a lot, there was a lot of injuries last year and a lot of people got to play. But um, So it's a very important game for both teams. I feel like it's going to be one of those games that comes down right to the wire. I, it's going to be too close to call for me. Next was Auburn versus North Carolina. So... Um, this is going to be a very important game for both teams here because um, well for, for any SEC team, I feel like they lose out of conference and it should then they have to run the table basically in order to get into the playoffs. Um, since they already had the one loss, it's going to be very hard for them to get in. Um, but that goes for mostly any, any team. But anyways, so North Carolina, though, let's say they had they got upset by UCF the previous week because they played at UCF and then that's a potential upset game. But like, let's say they get upset there. And then they host Auburn, but they lose that one. So they start off 0 2. A lot of people who were high on North Carolina, including myself, are going to get down, and the hype's not going to be there. Now, I feel like North Carolina will still have a successful season just because they play in the ACC, which is weaker than the other Power 5 conferences. So they can end up still winning their side of the division because I feel like they wouldn't beat Clemson. But, um, so they can still have a pretty good year, but I mean, if they can't. Um, do well not conference, then the, the, um, the hype is going to kind of die down for those. It's part for them to, to try to get this win. Um, but same with Auburn, though, since they have to compete with Alabama and A&M and LSU and stuff like that. Um, and the fourth game is Kentucky versus Florida, so we get an early SEC matchup here. Um, in my mind, um, Kentucky is going to – I think they're going to take a step back a little bit. They lost their quarterback, lost some players, and Florida is going to be – one of the best the, um, teams that they've had in a while, probably since Tim Tebow. So I feel like Kentucky is just not going to be as good. But the one thing that's going for Kentucky in this game is that since it's early in the season, you never know. Um, five is Penn State versus Virginia Tech. So obviously this is a very important game for both teams here because Penn State's like they have to go through Ohio State um, and Michigan, but mainly through Ohio State. So they can't afford a loss early. And then for Virginia Tech... Um, it's been a while since they've been a top like ten type of program and like been basically relevant to compete like as a contender in ACC to win it all. Basically, it's been a while. Um, so if if they can get this win, then it shows hey maybe Virginia takes back on the map to being like a serious contender versus just a good team but not great team. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that game goes. Six is the rivalry of Iowa, so Iowa State versus Iowa. Now this is the one chance. Um, Iowa's been down recently, so this is one chance for Iowa State to finally um, get some revenge in this right win again. Because a, they got the experienced quarterback and a top ten quarterback um, this year in the college football with Brock Purdy. Um, they Iowa's um, going to be having a lot of new people, but also Iowa's been having a lot of offseason controversy with their um, 
Black Lives Matter um, issue. So I feel like um, that might hang hang around over them and stuff this season. And I feel like the Iowa's not going to be as I don't feel like Iowa's not going to be a top twenty five team this year. Let's just say that. I mean, they're still going to be bulgeable. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like they're not going to be a top twenty five worthy team. Um, so this is Iowa State's chance to get them. Um, seven Michigan State versus BYU. Um, so this here's the tough test for Mel Tucker starting off, and we'll get, we'll get to see pretty soon how his team's going to be doing this year um, from this game alone. Um, in my mind, it's going to be a rebuilding year, um, kind of like how the first year for Colorado was a rebuilding year, even though they did some good things, but um, I feel like um, I feel like they're gonna win this game. But BYU with their tough schedule, they need to win this home game. Uh, that's all I gotta say. They need they need to win it. But expect this to be a low scoring, tough, physical, good game. A hey, Tennessee versus Oklahoma. So this is a very intriguing non conference game because even though there's gonna be a new QB for Oklahoma, a lot of people are saying he's gonna be just fine. He's gonna be like Mayfield and Murray and um, Hurts. Like he's gonna be just fine. Um, but even then, he he'll have to go in the second game against an SEC defense. And it's not just like a vendor bill or something like that. Or 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 Arkansas. like Tennessee is like um, a decent team in the SEC. So it's going to be interesting to see how a high how like the how Big Twelve athletes are going to face against a very good SEC athletes. Because like Tennessee, they got some ballers, they got some athletes and uh, fast players and skilled players on the team. Um, because of the conference here with Oklahoma, where they more finesse type of team, but so it's going to be a very interesting to see um, who wins between that, because that could be a very easy game for Oklahoma to get upset, even though it's in Oklahoma. Nine Louisville versus Clemson, so this might as well just be for um, whoever wins this game will win the Atlantic Division um, in the ACC. So it's most likely going to be Clemson, but Louisville since early in the season, I remember how North Carolina made things interesting, even though it's at North Carolina, but like Louisville can maybe make things interesting here. Wait and see. Um, and then 10 is a group of five game. You got Boise State versus Air Force. And so I feel like Air Force is, I can, for some reason, I'm just very hot on this year. I feel like they have the very best chance um, to be ha- the group of five represented for near six bowl game this year after what they were able to accomplish last season. And they're able to build off that because they went 11 2 last year or 12 2 last year, I think. So they're just, they can just build off that. Um, and, and for Boise State, they're usually always the group of five, like nominee, if you, if you will. Um, unless it, like it's either boy it's either boys day or a team from the American Conference basically, but um boy but so boys you still so they still have to go through boys state but um it's a good, it should be a good game and winner this one's gonna ha- set themselves up real nice for a group of five spot later on down the line. So then you got a top th- um, ten week three games. So you got Georgia versus Alabama. This is obviously gonna be a top game of the week. Could be an SC Championship matchup preview. We shall wait and see. But I'm not going to put my money all on it. Um, we don't usually get um, these teams to meet in the regular season. It's usually SC Championship game or that one time in the playoffs. But um, I'm glad they're meeting the regular season because this can have plenty of ramifications. Because, like, let's say Georgia loses to Alabama and then loses to Florida and then has only two losses. And then Florida only has one SC loss. Therefore, they go SC Championship. It's like, well, dang it. If we didn't play Alabama, we could have done it. We could have been the winner, but well, so it's going to have plenty of advocates like that. Also, Alabama um, and Nick Saban, he continues to be his assistant, but could this be the time where an assistant finally beats him? We'll have to wait and see on that. But um, this game definitely favors Georgia, actually, because A, Georgia has a um, new Mr. quarterback, and Alabama, the new quarterback, is only going to still be a few games into the season. And Georgia, since Georgia defense won the best in the country, he could easily um, – Make life really difficult for the Alabama quarterback, so it's going to be so it's going to be um, really interesting to see. And I expect this to be a low-scoring defensive game here, but it's going to be too close to call. Two is Iowa versus Minnesota. So Iowa's team that kind of started to derail Minnesota's hopes for a spectacular season per se um, last year, even though they had a very magical season for their standards. Um, but uh, Minnesota, you know, is going to be looking for revenge. But the question is, can they fix the mistakes and beat Iowa this time? Or can I? Or does Iowa's head coach just um, have the upper hand on this um, game? But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Again, early in season, it could still happen. Um, three Auburn versus Ole Miss, and now we get to see some Lane Kiffin in action here with Ole Miss. Now I expect Ole Miss to improve and I actually and get bowl eligible this year um, with Lane Kiffin at the helm. And it starts off. I didn't mention this week one, but Ole Miss plays Baylor in week one, so they're gonna have to start playing by that one if they want to get any hype whatsoever to the team. 
But assuming they can win that one, I feel like they will because Baylor has their new coaching problems and they lost some good defensive players. Um, I feel like um, Ole Miss, if they, so they start 2-0 and then they can upset Auburn here at home and start 3-0 and the hype is very real and things can start looking very good for Ole Miss. Um, I feel like this is actually going to be a really close game. Um, I'm not sure to pick. We'll wait and see. Four, BYU versus Arizona State. Now, I expect the Sun Devils to take a very big leap this year with Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels, their freshman quarter last year, now becoming a sophomore. In it. And them doing pretty well last year. They upset Oregon. They finished 8-5, and five, so they're on the right track. Uh, they're, um, they can easily win the Pac-12 South, at least, or if not win the whole Pac-12 this year, so it's going to be interesting to see. Um, BYU has a lot of fans in Arizona. I know they're going to kind of bring it. Um, it's going to be a very interesting game. I feel like it's going to be a very close game. It'll come down right to the wire, so we'll have to wait and see there. Five, USC versus Stanford. So this rivalry game actually had a lot of implications last year. So because USC won, they showed, okay, yeah, we're we're not that 5-17. Um, we're, we're back to being bowl eligible, first of all. The second of all, it's like, yeah, we're back to being pretty good, top 25 ranking, stuff like that. And Stanford, it's like they went from – all of a sudden, oh, yeah, they're not bowl eligible. and Yeah, they're not good as usual. Like, that's how much of an impact that game had. Because at that time, we thought, okay, Stanford was, is going to be at least average as usual, if not pretty good. And then USC, we're not sure about that. But then, then by the season ends, that all changed. So that will be interesting to see if this game has the same ramifications as it did last year. If you're Stanford, you need to win this game or else you're screwed. <laughs> okay, six, Missouri versus South Carolina. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup here. Missouri is looking to improve off a of 6-6 six six season and go um, hopefully with a winning record with their new head coach. And in South Carolina, after missing out on a bowl game last year, uh, Will Muschamp has a lot to prove. He wants his seat to not uh, be warming up. So a very important game for both teams here. I feel like it's a coin flip. We'll have to wait and see. 7, Arkansas versus Mississippi State. Now, um, you got Mike Leach here, which would be fun. And Arkansas. I feel like Arkansas will improve because they have now graduate transfer from Florida Felipe Franks as a quarterback, but their record may not show up because of their tough division of conference. Um, so they may just be 4-8, and eight, but it's going to be a very good 4-8 and type of thing. I don't know. But um, I feel like Mississippi State will win this one. It'll be very interesting to see um, how um, Mike Leach does because you need to recruit specifically for a rare eight offense, so that's going to be interesting to see how the team adapts on the fly there. Um, eight, Colorado versus Texas A&M. Now there's not a lot of time. 10 worthy game scenario starting to get some of the ant ones. Cause I don't feel like Colorado's going to be getting more of Bill Tucker out now. Yeah, you know, coach, I just feel like it's going to be all rebuilding. They lost a bunch of good seniors. So they're only going to win. They're going to be one of the worst teams in Pac 12. And Texas AM, they have a high expectation. So they better not um, screw the pooch on this one and take care of business here. Um, nine, Vanderbilt versus Kansas State. So I'm not sure what happened to Vanderbilt last year. Like they were like six or seven, six, wherever. Like, the year before, things were like, okay, they're decent. But then all of a sudden, they're only won two games last year. And oh, for the SEC. So if Mason wants to get seen as hot seat, they only have to win seven games for their Vanderbilt standards to be good. So it's not like they have to go win nine games. Just win seven games, at least you're fine. So Vanderbilt needs to improve if they want to remain, uh, if the coach wants to remain safe. And the Kansas State, they um, exceeded expectations last year, in my opinion, under the first year coach. And I'm a young quarterback, Thompson. So I feel like they're going to continue to improve. Um, so it all starts to be an SEC team at home, because in my mind, they're going to be a dark horse in the Big 12. And last but not least, Maryland versus West Virginia. So if West Virginia loses the Florida State throughout the season, as I mentioned earlier, that, um, if they lose that game, then they're going to really need to lose this game. Otherwise, they're going to be screwed in the Big 12 going 0-2 in there. But, um, but it's at home, which will help. The Maryland, I feel like, once again, I feel like they're going to improve, but the record may not indicate it because of the tough division conference. Um, but I feel like this game can be a, is going to be a very high-scoring game. It'll be interesting to see who does well. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening to my show today. Please subscribe to my channel. Tell everyone about me. Thank you very much, and y'all have a wonderful day.